Welcome to the Inland Sports Show. It is week zero. High school football is finally here. Jeff, we're going to get things cracking. We got Thursday night game that we're excited about and a full slate on Friday night. I, I know it's like 100 degrees outside, but it is football season. It, it, it almost feels like Christmas. You know, it's a giddy feeling, you know, it the is. week before. I'll tell you what, there's nothing better than high school football, especially here in the IE. People always ask me, they're like, do you genuinely love high school football this much? And I'm like, I, I do, but it's, it's kind of like a love hate relationship and I think high school football coaches out there w would agree like you do love it but it's yeah. it's a lot of long hours the season's real long I mean you know what I mean a time away from the family the, the, the whole deal but we but we love it yeah we do I'll tell you what like you said it's it's a love hate the love part is we love like you said going to the games <laughs> the hate part is when you get home you get the stink guy from the wife and the kids <laughs> or they say who the heck are you we yeah. haven't seen you in months <laughs> so it's like Christmas time yeah. thanks to teams like you know like Centennial yes. and we've seen Cajon play those deep seasons into December. It's like, okay, I'll see you at Christmas. It was yeah. good seeing you. <laughs> well, it's like, yeah, it's like Kaiser last year. Kaiser, Kaiser. Was playing, <laughs> been playing. They've been playing for, it seems like they played long into the season in the middle of basketball season. So, yeah, it's definitely going to get busy, and it starts this Thursday, tomorrow night. All right, yeah, we do have a Thursday night game. It's a big one. It's going to be live radio on the Inland Sports Channel. We'll get to that uh, a little bit later. But first, we want to talk about some of those premier games, teams that – start this week, but we could probably see them playing deep into December, making a state championship run. This team has done it the last couple of years, appearing in back-to-back -back CIF Southern Section Championship games. We're talking about the Cajon Cowboys. And, and Jeff, I mean, the biggest question mark, call me Captain Obvious here on the Inland Sports Show, but they have to replace quarterback Jaden Daniels, who broke every record known to man. He threw around the globe like two or three times, I think, if you add all his yards in play. But how would you like to be that guy to – to follow Jaden Daniels. And that guy is Patrick Reagan. He's a, he's a King High School transfer, so he, he left King and Riverside, went up there knowing that, you know, they obviously need a, need a quarterback. But Jaden Daniels, not only do you rewrite the entire school record book, but he's also the all-time leading passer in yards and touchdowns in the Southern section. You know how many great high school football quarterbacks came through the Southern section? Jaden Daniels is the best of all time. The best of all time. Also, the starting quarterback at Arizona State. That's that's true. That is going to say something because he's the first true freshman to ever start at Arizona State. So that is some kind of pedigree. Well, we're going to hear from Jaden Daniels in just a moment. But first, Cajon head coach Nick Rogers uh, talking about this year's team, the expectations. You know, they won the Division Four championship two years ago. They went to the D3 finals, losing to Sierra Canyon last year. They're in Division Three once again. And they might not have Jaden Daniels, but they still got some dudes up there in San Bernardino. They have always had dudes. And re, re, I recall two years ago they were in a state championship game as yeah. well. So, I mean, they've just – they're going to rebuild. You look – you know, I'm sure some somebody's going to say, well, they're not going to be as good. But Coach Rogers and that entire school just seems to bring guys in. It's a lot like Centennial. Yeah. They just show up and there's there's three or four guys deep and at every position and they're that talented. Great skill guys. Lorenzo McMillan, Rodney Robinson on the defensive side of the football. Trey Von King up front. They, again, the cupboard's not bare. Cajon's going to be just fine. Uh, here's Cowboys head coach Nick Rogers. Inland Sports. Uh, we came out. We, they competed pretty well. Um, you know, after we had our spring ball, it wasn't looking as great. Uh, some of our stuff offensively, I think we're starting to pick up, get a little rhythm together, uh, getting used to each other. We got some new guys out there playing some different positions. So uh, some guys really stepped up, made some big plays. Uh, I thought, you know, our quarterback, you know, he made some good decisions today, made some good balls, threw some good balls, and we're, we're excited to get going. Yeah, he played well. You know, it was his first kind of, uh, you know, showing for us. Uh, he stepped up, made, made a few big throws, missed a couple, but uh, those are things that are correct. Well, you know, he knows he knows the mistakes he made. Now he's got to go out and correct it. But overall, I think he had good command of the offense, made some really good decisions, some good ball, threw some good balls, and uh, I, I think I think we're in good shape. We had, we had a pretty small playbook uh, this week. We wanted to kind of condense things, get people comfortable with everything. We you know we threw I think eight or nine different receivers in today, kind of getting them in the mix and, and trying to see what what's our best grouping that gets out there and gels the best together. So uh, the, you know it was about keeping it kind of um, small and simple, but but still functional for us and, and getting our our, our basic stuff down. Sports. 
now Cajon goes on the road to take on a San Diego powerhouse Helix. That's the home of Reggie Bush, Alex Smith. Uh, Pretty good players. Yeah, they've had a, a great football run at Helix High School. Uh, so they're going to go on the road to the San Diego area on Friday. But this is a Helix team that was really good last year. Cajon beat them by 40. No, yep. I'm just saying, man. I got uh, I got IE pride all over the place. I'm just saying we got we got good football up here. I know San Diego does too, but we got a really high level in the Inland Empire. And well, San Diego doesn't have a pro team, so you can't really say anything. But, you know, we've <laughs> got, we've got all of them now. But no, Coach Rogers. You know, he talked about you know they kept the playbook simple. Well, you have to because your quarterback was your quarterback for the last four years, and the biggest thing that they're going to have to deal with that first week is timing in itself. And a lot of programs you're going to see smaller playbooks this week, but it's based on timing. They want to kind of get in that groove. A very athletic team, but a new quarterback after four years, it's a big transition. Yeah, and coming up in our next segment, we're going to have Ramon Scott from uh, East uh, let me get this right. I don't want to mess this up. Uh, East County Sports and the Prep Pigskin Report at KUSI TV in the San Diego area is going to talk about this Cajon versus Helix matchup because um, down in the San Diego area, that's also a massive game. Oh, I'm um, sure it is. For their coverage as well. So we're going to talk to Ramon about that uh, coming up in our next segment. But we did have a chance to talk with Jaden Daniels. And, and Jeff, you mentioned it for the very first time a true freshman starting at quarterback for Arizona State. The best athlete I, I think I've seen in the last you know, 25, 30 years here in the Inland Empire as a quarterback. Uh, he's one of those guys that could have played at any position he wanted. His, his cerebral vision of the game makes him that good. And I, I firmly believe, and I've said this jokingly, you know, he could play in the NFL or play in uh, the CFL right now. I think he'll be an NFL quarterback when it's all said and done just because of his work ethic, his, his mindset, his uh, athletic ability and his tenaciousness. Yeah, he's he's one of the best, the greatest uh, to come out of the southern section. Uh, that's for sure, just by the numbers. Numbers don't yes. lie. He he was a four-year starter. In fact, uh, you know, I joke around, you know, with with Coach Rogers and his mom that I remember going down to the Paloma Valley Passing Tournament when Jaden was an incoming freshman, and Coach Rogers saying, you know, I got this uh, this young guy, Jaden Daniels. He he's pretty good. He might actually start as a freshman. I was like. Oh, okay. Well, we'll have to see how this guy works out. I have that. I'm going to dig up that video at some point because that's where we got our first look at Jaden was. Was that 2014? Yeah, I guess it was. Like, and, he, and he looked like a little kid out there. And he, you know, and just until probably his junior year, he he looked like those stick pins just sticking a wall. He, was, <laughs> he had, you know, he had the big head and he was a little guy, but he yeah. could throw the football yeah. like none other. He's filled out nicely. Yes, he has. He's doing just okay for himself. Uh, we finally had a chance to catch up with Jaden Daniels. Here's our exclusive interview with the former Cajon signal caller, now the starting quarterback at Arizona State, Jaden Daniels. Sports. All right. Freshman in Arizona State history to be named the starter. Um, man, there's been a lot of quarterbacks, uh, good quarterbacks at ASU. Well, what's it like making history like this? I mean, it's a blessing to go out there, uh, be able to go out there and be the first true freshman. Uh, I really don't look into it, but I know it's a big accomplishment, but I'm just ready to play week one. Jaden, was there a point during maybe spring ball or, or even camp so far where you felt like you were maybe getting a little separation from the other quarterbacks or are those other guys just pushing you really hard and really just bringing out the best in your game? Uh, I mean, they just really just sat there just kept pushing me. We kept pushing each other, really. Uh, it's, a, it's a competition always. I know that uh, we go out there, have fun, uh, just compete against each other, and uh, I was blessed enough to be named the starter. How did, that, how did that all go down with uh, with Coach Edwards? Did he pull you aside and, and talk to you like after practice before addressing the media? How did that kind of all unfold on Monday night? Uh, I mean, he pulled me aside uh, before practice. He was like, I want you to know that you're the starter. Uh, this is your team and uh, and everything else. And I was just like, thank you. And uh, just went off and had practice, had a good day of practice. And then uh, it was announced after practice. Jaden, you guys have a huge season opener coming up. Do you think you'll be a little bit nervous? I mean, do you think once that ball is snapped, it's just like old times wearing that Cajon uniform, like you'll just, you know, slip back into the, your old habits and throwing touchdowns? Yeah, it's going to be uh, – yeah, at first I'm going to be nervous, but once the ball is snapped, it's going to be time to play football. Uh, just go out there, first college football game. Uh, I'm going to have some other thoughts, but after that I'm going to be fine. 
know, Jaden, you were a four-year starter for the Cowboys, so you're used to starting football games. Going into your freshman season at Arizona State, did you have the mindset that you were going to prepare like the starter anyways, whether whether you were named the number one guy or not? You just, I mean, that's the probably the only way you're wired, right? You're used to being the starting quarterback. Yeah, yeah I mean, I did have that mindset, uh, no matter what, because you never know if I wasn't the starter, you never know when your name is called. So you always have to be ready. Always, uh, Coach Edwards said that always prepare like you're the starter because you never know when your name might be called. And finally, Jaden, uh, do you have a message for anyone back in the 909 Dino City? Because uh, there's a lot. You got a lot of fans back here, man. I mean, just just stay tuned. Uh, Arizona State football now. Uh, I had to leave Cali. Had to kind of Arizona, uh, but it's still all love back home. Awesome. Thanks, Jaden. We appreciate it, brother. Best of luck out there at ASU. We'll be following uh, very closely this season. Thank you. There he is, Jaden Daniels, uh, now at Arizona State. Uh, I'm sure he'll be keeping tabs of Cajon and, and Helix come Friday night. You know, I'm sure he's going to be keeping tabs on the Cowboys all season long, even though he's going through his first college season. Yeah, I was just thinking, he's, you know, Jake Plummer had a pretty nice career at, at Arizona State. Yeah. yeah I think, I think uh, the future's a little bright for that guy. Yeah, he's going to be just fine. All right, from Cajon to our Thursday night game, we're going to have yeah. live radio on the Inland Sports YouTube channel. Um, it's going to be Norta Vista against Paloma Valley. So we're going we're gonna to break open the 2019 football season with the Braves and the Wildcats coming – Coming up, uh, we're going to get to Elijah in just a yes. second. Um, but Norda Vista and Paloma Valley, the, the, the only Thursday night game in our coverage area. So, And we're going to have it live. And, Jeff, that's a pretty good game on paper. I'll tell you what. You, you, you talk about what Paloma Valley's done in, in the last 10 years, and they've been very successful. But you also talk about Norda Vista the last 26 years. They've been very successful, and they've been doing the same thing over and over, and that is smash mouth football with Cam Batdorf. This is going to be a good one. Last year, was a, a great game at Paloma, but I'll tell you what, uh, Eddie Elaine, the, the true sophomore, brother of Freddie Holly, the running back at uh, University of Hawaii, he's going to be something special for the next three years for Ken Baddorf. Well, we caught up with Norda Vista at their scrimmage at Canyon Springs along with Sam Bernardino and Fontana, and the Braves were actually throwing the ball a little bit. And, what? And you're going to hear from Coach Baddorf. He's like, hey, we're going we're gonna to throw. <laughs> Ken Baddorf, don't throw. <laughs> don't throw, my man. I've seen it before. As do not do it. It happened at San G. Don't do it. Just run the football. House right, house left. That's it. Smash mouth. He, as, he did, as he called it, an, an aerial Circus. Stop it. So get ready. Uh, Norda Vista is going to really air it out this season. Stop it. Don't do it. Don't do it, Ken. Uh, Elijah Green, um, our reporter out in the field. You're going to see a lot more of Elijah throughout football season. Has this recap on the scrimmage and the Norda Vista Braves. Sports. Hey guys, I'm here for preseason football at Canyon Springs High School as they host a four-way scrimmage featuring Fontana, San Bernardino High School, and the Northern Vista Braves. Canyon Springs looking to bounce back from a winless season as they looked very impressive throughout the scrimmage led by their quarterback, Damon Hicks, who was able to get it done on the ground. The Northern Vista Braves looking very strong throughout this scrimmage as their defense continues to make play after play for their head coach, Cam Backdorf, as he enters his 26th season. We did some things well uh, defensively. I saw us fly around. Uh, we came out a little flat. We can't come out flat, uh, so we learned that. Um, I think as an offense, we have to get more consistent. We did some really good things. Um, we're trying to throw the ball a little bit more, which is new for us. Um, so, again, I saw some good things on that. Um, I saw Eddie run the ball well. I saw Jesus Gonzalez run the ball well. I saw Lucky run the ball well. So that was nice. We have a new quarterback, Danny Gonzalez. I thought Danny did a pretty good job of running the offense. Um, the more reps he gets, the more comfortable he looks. So that was a good sign for us. Um, you know, we're still a little young, even though we're returning like 15 guys who started last year. You know, we still have a ton of juniors. So we have to stop playing like juniors and start playing like seniors. Didn't you watch it? I think it was an aerial circus. I think we had 10 passes today, and we completed five or six. So th that's the idea. We'd like to throw the ball a little bit more. If we can, it keeps people a little bit more honest. Um, they don't cut us as much because we'll get more time to throw the ball. Um, so anyway, that's that's the thought, and Danny Gonzalez did a really good job at quarterback today. 
Good job, Elijah. Good job to Coach Batdorf and his aerial circus out there. Aerial circus? Blah, blah. Smash mouth, <laughs> child abuse, run offense, score the ball. No throwing the ball. Cam Batdorf, stop. Hey, Citrus Hill won a, a championship running the football, not even attempting hey, a single pass. Well, they, it they, works. They did it against Norta Vista. Do you remember that? Yeah. And, 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 and was it, it semifinal game? It was the finals at uh, Citrus Hill, and uh, Novi threw like three interceptions in the first half. I said, don't ever do it again. What happened at San G a couple years ago? Yeah. They threw the ball, and then uh, Malesio fumbled it. They lose the game. Do not throw. Coach Gorham, everybody. There you go. Uh, my, my, uh, <laughs> <laughs> off your soapbox now. Yeah, right? there it is. Kim Baddorf's probably shaking his head right yes, now. Like, what does Coach Gorham know anyways about football? <laughs> I'm the coach. Uh, here's our fancy graphic. Paloma Valley against Norta Vista. Again, if you're watching us live right now on the Inland Sports Channel on YouTube, that's where we'll uh, be tomorrow night. Cullen Holt, Tim Hatch will have the call live. Paloma Valley on the road at Norta Vista, our very first game of the season. A lot more football content coming your way on the Inland Sports Channel, so be sure to hit that subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it. All right, and uh, our boost broadcast schedule coming up. Uh, again, this is something we're going to do uh, each and every week, kind of keep people up to date on the uh, local football coverage uh, here on the Inland Sports Show, as well as our friends here at Teen Vision TV 16, IMG, Riverside TV, uh, ABC Radio, 1490 AM. Uh, here's the schedule this week, your boost broadcast schedule. Uh, Paloma Valley Novi Thursday night. Big games on Friday. Palm Desert Beaumont. Rialto Orange Vista on Teen Vision TV 16. And the Riverside TV opener, which Jeff will have the call. Hillcrest against Arlington. Uh, Jeff, you excited about that one? I'll tell you what. I, I am. I, I'm looking forward to see this new offense that uh, Coach Roney's uh, running at Arlington. And I'm looking to see the new look Hillcrest team without head coach John Branham at the helm. Yeah. It's going to be a different look, maybe a different look offense. I think you're right. And, uh, of course, Sports Weekly Live on IEMG, Friday nights, 11 o'clock, live on the IE Media Group YouTube channel, so check that out as well. And uh, each week we're also going to pick a Ken Sporting Goods must-see game. So if, if you're a local football fan in the Inland Empire and you're like, man, I, I got no plans on Friday night, I don't got a girlfriend, I got nothing to do, uh, we're gonna, <laughs> Elijah's like, that's me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but if you need something to do, we're going we're gonna to pick out a game where like this is a uh, this is a good high school football yeah. game uh this week's kin sporting goods must see game of the week it's going to be roosevelt taking on rancho cucamonga two of the top teams in the inland empire we have a fancy graphic for that as well so if you're wanting to go out there and see that and look at the eyeballs oh look at that oh, it's must see it's must see googly eyes <laughs> we got googly look at that yeah, so we love Tommy Leach. Uh, he, oh. He's a good dude and a fun guy. And his Roosevelt teams are always competitive. And Rancho Cucamonga, by all accounts, um, still one of the top teams in San Bernardino County. Them, Upland, and, and Cajon, I guess, if you're going to make a short list, right? Yes. Top teams in the county, at least. Um, so your Ken Sporting Goods must-see game this Friday night. Rancho Cucamonga, Roosevelt. So if you got nothing to do, you don't have a girlfriend, um, go check out <laughs> Roosevelt in the coop. There's going to be nothing but single guys <laughs> in the bleachers <laughs> thinking they're going to pick up on chicks and it's just going to be dudes watching. High All school. dudes. I will. All dudes. Pep and Jeff said come to this game. <laughs> it's the worst game ever. Yes. All right. All right. <laughs> when we come back, we'll talk more high school football. Ramon Scott from East County Sports and the Prep Pigskin Report will join us live on the show when we come back. What's going on, guys? This is Ray Bass from Boost Performance Training. You're watching the Inland Sports Show with the one and only Pep Fernandez. The Inland Sports Show is brought to you by Spoiled. Quick quality oil change. Spoil yourself and your car at Spoiled. Ken Sporting Goods. They have all of your sporting gear needs, letterman's jackets, and team uniforms. Boost Performance Training with Coach Ray Bass. Athletes of all levels and all sports are going to Boost Performance Training in Corona. Mike's Fitness Equipment. Check out the new storeroom on La Cadena. Quality fitness equipment at affordable prices. Mike's Fitness Equipment. And JoJo's Gorilla Dog, located in the Mountain Grove Shopping Center in Redlands. Let's be frank, not all dogs are created equal. JoJo's Gorilla Dog. I would say the one thing that uh, we stress more
than anything else is service to our customer. Make sure that they're taking care of whatever you can do to make sure that that order gets to them on time and it's the right quality and, and what they want. Been that way since 1976. That was my goal to reach out to local uh, sports programs, and it's grown from there, and we've been very, very fortunate. son is right over here he's working for us and he's going to college right now and and uh, that's exactly what my son did uh, 20 some years ago and it keeps on going you know and we have customers that come in the store that it's amazing uh, people that I haven't been here since I was a little kid and I used to come in here all the time and then my now I'm bringing my son in here or, or a grandpa that's bringing his grandson in here that that came in here when we first opened back in 76. Oh, we just feel so fortunate to have been a part of this community and this Inland Empire uh, for going into our 44th year now, and um, it's just been a, a blessing. special. Former Cajon High School running back Jaden Daniels, a four-year starter for the Cajon Cowboys, true freshman at Arizona State. ASU head coach Herm Edwards, NFL great Herm Edwards, oh, of has named Jaden Daniels the starting quarterback. Wow. The first time wow. in Arizona State history a true freshman has started at quarterback, and it's our guy it's our kid. right here from That's Dino City, deal, San Bernardino. Wow. Yeah, so they've had some great running backs go through ASU. I think of like Jake Plummer, Danny White, uh, but Jaden Daniels will be the first ever to start as a I freshman. I love it, dude. You and welcome back to the Inland Sports Show live and amplified at Teen Vision TV 16. Jeff Gorham, I'm Pep Fernandez. Hey, a shout out to my daughter, Alana, who's watching right now, big time volleyball star, but she's home and she's doing homework, which I'm very proud of you. So keep it up. She's watching? She's watching right now. All right. Hi, Alana. Uh, hi, Alana. Hey, <laughs> we got more high school football to get to. Um, we told you that Ramon Scott's going to join us. He's live right now via Skype because maybe one of the biggest games, and it has like a lot of attention across the state, is Cajon on the road at Helix. This was a big game last year that the Cowboys rolled away with, but I got a feeling this year is going to be a lot closer. So, Ramon, it, it, Cajon versus Helix, is this game going to be a 40-point contest, or is it going to be as close as we think it might be on Friday night? Yeah, I think Helix is going to be able to close the gap this time. I still think Jaden Daniels is a sidebar to this game just because of the way Cajon's coming into the season and such a great season they had last year. A lot of people are still going to have expectations for the Cowboys, so I'm expecting them to bring in a good club. I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say about uh, their new quarterback, but, you know, if you look at the Cal prep ratings, Phoenix is expected to win this game by about a touchdown. You throw in a, a point or two for some home field edge, and you have Helix by even more than a touchdown. I certainly see it being a little bit closer just based on where Cajon's program currently stands. 
despite the fact it'll be obviously difficult to replicate uh, what Daniels and that team did over the last couple of seasons. Yeah, Ramon, it's it's kind of unfair that anyone has to follow in the footsteps of Jaden Daniels, who broke basically every passing record in the Southern section. And Jeff and I were just talking about so many great quarterbacks have gone through the Southern section, and, and he came out as the greatest of all time. But with that said, Cajon still has a lot of guys coming back. So we know the Cajon side. Tell us about the Helix side. Is Helix better than the team that Cajon beat by 40 last year? I think they've lost some key players, a major player that they lost. Their probably top player that they lost is Michael Shawcroft, who went on to San Diego State this season as a freshman. Interestingly, uh, Coach Rocky Long, who rarely plays any freshman uh, ever in his whole career as a college football coach, uh, said that he's probably not going to have any playing time for freshmen yet uh, that are coming in. But if one guy were to see time, it would be former Helix Highlander linebacker Michael Shawcroft. So that was an interesting piece of news that came out this week. But as far as this year, Helix is going to return uh, Elelion Fato Noah, who actually was knocked from the game last year in uh, one of the first uh, series of the game. Might have been the second series of the game, maybe the fourth or fifth play from the line of scrimmage. Uh, Not that Helix was ever going to be able to maybe overcome what Cajon could do uh, on the scoreboard in the long run in that game, but Noah is a major, major player. He might be the leading candidate for the county player of the league, a player of the year this year in San Diego. The Highlanders are ranked third, not only in the computer polls that everyone's familiar with, but also in the local media poll that came out yesterday. They also have a Division I quarterback prospect uh, actually heading to Army after this season. He expects to play quarterback at Army, or at least get a chance to. He's a two-star prospect. I'm talking about Delshawn Trailer. But his skill set uh, landed him on the San Diego All-CIF defensive team last year as a defensive back. He actually ends up sharing a little bit of time at quarterback because his skills on defense are so necessary, and you got to give the kid a break sometime. And so Felix does run a little bit of a two-quarterback system. Interestingly, one quarterback that uh, Coach Owens, Coach Robbie Owens, said was one of the best JV quarterbacks in the country, uh, in the county. I'm sorry, Jeffrey Schrock looked like he would be that that second guy. But just this past week, I visited with the Highlanders out of their camp, and their second back right now, their second quarterback is going to be Cameron Brown, who has done most of his work as a wide receiver and defensive back. Yeah, I will say this, you know, about this Cajon, you know, team. You figure Jaden Daniels has played – they haven't had another quarterback in 50-plus games. So, it could be a snake bite for Helix to take care of Cajon early. It's going to be a small playbook. We know that because it's a new quarterback. Uh, And you're you're losing – in the last two years, Cajon had the best defensive player in the country and the best offensive player in the country. But they continue – and Coach Nick Rogers, they have so many athletes, so many dudes that replace and replace. This could be – Helix is a good shot for them to get – a victory, but it is tough because there are so many athletes with Cajon. It does seem like sometimes uh, Helix has been snake bit a bit when meeting teams from the southern section. Maybe they it's that typical southern section, San Diego section. It's not necessarily a rivalry. A lot of the San Diego teams end up having trouble against southern section teams. Now, Helix has done their share of winning against some of those teams as well. So, Uh, I think that's why I expect Cajon to come in and play this game closer than what the computers are suggesting. We're talking with Ramon Scott from East County Sports and the Prep Pigskin Report on KUSI, which has been around forever. I'm a huge fan of that show. They do a great job covering high school football down in the San Diego section. Um, Ramon, let me ask you this, because I'm just trying to gauge how good this Helix team is. When you talk about Helix this season, are they in, in the conversation of that open division championship down there? Are they one of the top one, two, three teams in the San Diego area? Pep, this will be the fourth year of the Open Division in San Diego. The first two years, Helix qualified for the Open Division, winning one of those titles. Last year, Helix, because of that uh, awkward one-and-three start, which included 
the loss to Cajon, and they also lost to uh, Scottsdale Saguaro, and also their kind of sectional rival uh, in Cathedral end up with a one and three start, end up getting bumped down to Division One, where they eventually advanced to the Division One championship game against another sectional rival of theirs, St. Augustine. That game went down to the final play. St. Augustine won the Division One championship by one point. Felix missed a two-point conversion on the final play of the game. They bobbled the snap. So that's how close it was. But Helix is expected to return to the Open Division, which this will be the second year that San Diego's Open Division will be a four-team format. The first two years it was an eight-team format. And as I said, uh, I think we can trust not only the computers ranking of the Highlanders in third, but the media pundits, uh, including myself. I ranked the Highlanders third going in behind those two sectional rivals of theirs, Cathedral Catholic and St. Augustine followed by Helix. So those are probably the top three contenders in that open division. And you could uh, almost roll a three-sided die to decide which one is better. I will tell you, though, that uh, in that poll, uh, the Saints got 20 first-place votes from the media. Cathedral got 10 first-place votes from the media, and Helix received one. Now, talking about that Cathedral Catholic uh, school, they're playing uh, another one of our big schools out here, Centennial. What do you think of that matchup? Cathedral is definitely a power down here. There's no doubt about it. And they're the team, I think, that everyone kind of looks up to. I think people are expecting a, a jump from St. Augustine. They really have a nice uh, returning roster. But, man, Cathedral usually big, big in the trenches and like to move people around and always a strong running game as well and they like to that's how they like to do it is kind of uh, grind it out a little bit and uh, uh, I think that uh, you know, I don't know if I'm following closely enough to make a prediction in that game but uh, sounds like a marquee matchup for sure and uh, will come down to the wire I would assume yeah two of the top teams in the state Centennial's loaded again yes. uh, so we'll see how that pans out hey Ramon before we let you go uh, you know and I know there's a lot of crossover between our schools in the Inland Empire and San Diego where can people find your content because I know they'll probably want to stay up to date with some of those the helixes of the world the Cathedral Catholics um, how can they follow you on social media and where, where can they see your programs yeah my Twitter feed is at Ramon Scott Poker and usually on game night I'm tweeting out uh, from my game and several others uh, anything that pertains to my teams out here in the East County. Helix is from the Grossmont Conference here in the East County, and that's really the conference that I focus on at eastcountysports.com. Uh, you can find all of my coverage there. You know, Helix is our marquee team out here. And uh, from there, you know, Helix shared the championship last year with Steel Canyon and Granite Hills. And Pep, we never have a tried champion out here in one of our leagues. Our conference is split into two leagues. And uh, I went back into my old mentor's files. He passed away a couple of years ago. I couldn't find a tri-championship. And uh, with the balance of this league this year, it could happen again. Well, Ramon, you haven't lived until you had a five-way tie for first, which we had two seasons ago, a five-way tie for first. It was bizarre, but uh, think weirder things have happened. Ramon, we appreciate the time. Uh, have fun on Friday night. Football season's here. Let's do this again soon. I'm not getting any sleep. Ready to roll. <laughs> Thank you, Ramon. Appreciate it. That's Ramon Scott from uh, East County Sports and the Prep Pigskin Report on KUSI. They blow out high school football big time down there on this uh, Prep Pigskin Report. So, Like your show? Yeah, like my show. And speaking of, you know, if, if there was a Prep Pigskin Report in the Inland Empire, it would be Sports Weekly Live. Anthony, crank up the fancy graphic because our first show, our maiden voyage this season is Friday night, 11 o'clock, live on IEMG and the IE Media Group YouTube channel. So if you're sitting back saying, I don't have IEMG TV, I don't either. It's not a big deal. Go to the YouTube channel, IE Media Group. Hit subscribe live Friday night. Scores highlights, interviews from around the Inland Empire. It's the only high school football show in the IE. Yeah, in fact, a couple years ago, there was a guy that used to, to watch the show in his bathtub. Do you remember that? He was a Colton guy. I remember yes, that. I, you remember he said he would watch the show in his, his bathtub? His wife told me. Yeah, <laughs> so you know what I'm going to do just for you? Yes. I'm going to cover my game on Friday night with 
Riverside TV. Yes. I'm going to drive home. <laughs> I'm going to hop in my hot tub, sans bathing suit oh. nonetheless, and I'm going to watch you on my TV out by my pool, and I'm going to be all Pep Fernandez <laughs> from 11 to 12 p.m. No, 11 to 12 a.m., I should say. 12 a.m. Yeah, yeah, I'll be Stay there checking it out. Sometimes we even go beyond midnight oh. if, we have, if we have that many highlights. If, if it's past midnight, I'm going to bed. But I'll stay awake until 11.59 to watch the show. It depends how many highlights we have. And speaking of, if you have highlights from your game, let's say you go out to a game, you've got highlights, uh, tweet them at us at inland underscore sports. That's where I go on a Friday night. I go through the Twitter feed, and if you send us highlights, I grab them, and, uh, and I throw them in the show. So if you have a great play, a great highlight, make sure you tweet at inland underscore sports. It could end up in the show. And speaking of, and i got to send a shout-out to Coach Turner and uh, Marietta Mesa High School. Um, they had an awesome play in their scrimmage, and he, he sent it to me on Twitter, of course. And uh, go ahead, Anthony, play that one because this was a very special play that took place during their scrimmage. Toby Kendra, um, their number 99 for the Murrieta Mesa Rams, um, a player with autism. And look at Kendra go to the end zone. This was a scrimmage, and that's Arlington on the field with them as well. So, again, one of those moments where, where football feels a little bit bigger than just a sport where these guys were able to come together and, and give Toby that, that special moment uh, on the gridiron uh, with his teammates and, you know, really inclusive, making him feel like he's a part of the team, and that's what it's all about. It, it really is. You know, you talk about the wins and losses, but really it boils down to teaching, and this that was a teaching moment. Yeah. Uh, being a great teammate, uh, being a great human being, and it's nice to see stories like that all the time, especially here in the Inland Empire. Yeah, so thank you to the Rams for sending that to us on Twitter. We do appreciate it. We love sharing those stories yes. here on the Inland Sports Show because uh, we're not about the negative news. No. <laughs> and if there was, we no. would share it here. Uh, all, all the good stuff here on the Inland Sports Show. All right, still to come, we have an interview with Greg Zomalt, the head football coach at Orange Vista. He will be joining us live in studio. We're also going to check in with the California Baptist women's soccer team. They kick off their season actually tomorrow night. We got breaking news. Uh, they had to change the location, the venue of their game. Why? For their first game because they're getting their, their home field, their home pitch at CBU redone. So they had to move their opener. So we're going to have those details. That's a, that's a cliffhanger. We're, I can't wait. We're going to tease you guys a little bit. Jeez. When we come back, uh, more high school football with Orange Vista head coach Greg Zomal and CBU women's soccer. The Lancer season is here. It all gets started tomorrow night. We'll be back with more Inland Sports Show. Hello, everybody. This is Mike Maynard, the head football coach at the University of Redlands, and you're watching the Inland Sports Show. How you guys doing? Coach Bass here, letting you all know that we will be opening enrollment for the 2019-2020 Boost Alternative School for Student Athletes in January. Bass is a private school here in Corona, California that emphasizes academic and athletic development for student athlete life as they prepare for high school and college. If you'd like more information regarding our private school, please feel free to reach out to us directly. You can contact us through social media uh, on Instagram at Boost Training, on Twitter Boost underscore Training, or you can contact us here at our gym at 95 Five one five three two four nine zero four.
justice for all. For every square inch between fruited plains and spacious skies. Marines fight to win. See all the battles Marines fight to win at Marines.com. I would say the one thing that uh, we stress more than anything else is service to our customer. Make sure that they're taken care of, whatever you can do to make sure that that order gets to them on time and it's the right quality and, and what they want. I've been that way since 1976. That was my goal, to reach out to local uh, sports programs and it's grown from there and we've been very, very fortunate. My grandson is right over here. He's working for us and he's going to college right now. And, and uh, that's exactly what my son did uh, 20 some years ago. And it keeps on going, you know. And we have customers that come in the store that it's amazing. Uh, people that I haven't been here since I was a little kid and I used to come in here all the time and then my now I'm bringing my son in here or, or a grandpa that's bringing his grandson in here that, that came in here when we first opened back in 76. Oh, we just feel so fortunate to have been a part of this community and this Inland Empire uh, for going into our 44th year now. And um, it's just been a, a blessing. Sports Show is brought to you by Spoiled. Quick quality oil change. Spoil yourself and your car at Spoiled. Ken Sporting Goods. They have all of your sporting gear needs, letterman's jackets, and team uniforms. Boost performance training with Coach Ray Bass. Athletes of all levels and all sports are going to boost performance training in Corona. Mike's Fitness Equipment. Check out the new storeroom on La Cadena. Quality fitness equipment at affordable prices Mike's Fitness Equipment and JoJo's Gorilla Dog located in the Mountain Grove Shopping Center in Redlands let's be frank not all dogs are created equal JoJo's Gorilla Dog Inland Sports Show. We're really blowing it out high school football style uh, on this show, Jeff. We have brought in the top names the last few weeks, but none are bigger than this guy. Well, yeah, because he's obviously a well-known name in our area, and he's got his brother on staff, so they got two great minds. <laughs> not bad. Uh, not too bad at all. At Orange Vista, head coach Greg Zomalton. And, Coach, it's always good to see you, first off. Um, and we were joking off the air that your mom, who is a huge yes. football fan, yes. um, now she can go to just Orange Orange Vista on Friday nights, at yes. least, to watch football, right? So, yes, my mom, she's not torn anymore. She can, <laughs> she can go all in with Orange Vista. Uh, we do have nephews. I have nephews there. My brother's son plays there, too, freshman ball. So, so she'll be going Thursday afternoon as well as, as well as Friday night. I'm excited, you know, for her to be there. And, and um, it's a family affair now. So it's really, it's really good. So your brother Eric running the defense now at uh, Orange Vista High School. Yes. Do you like being around your brother that much? Obviously, you guys must get along. <laughs> Man, I, I prepare my, my response because everybody's asking me, you know, how is it to have my brother here? And, and um, you know, I, I would get emotional and, you know, whatever. And so I, I kind of prepare my response. <laughs> it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's very exciting to have him here. It's very much a big blessing for me to have him here. And, um, you know, we see the world in, in a lot of ways the same way. And, and uh, we've been a, been a team uh, since we were babies and, and uh, coaching together for over 20 years. And so um, it's just a huge blessing for me to have him have him here. And, you know, and he can coach a little bit, too. So, yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, my question is, you know, I, I have a, an older brother. My dad was, you know, a longtime coach. He coached with me for a while. You guys have you had, Got to tell me, have you had any brawls on the sidelines <laughs> where you've yelled at each other and they're going, what? Or behind going closed on? doors. Yeah, the there's got to be something. You know, uh, we got that all out the way as kids uh, with the sibling rivalry. And, you know, I've choked him out a few times and he's pulled weapons on me, yeah. you know, as kids and stuff. But, uh, 
But as adults, I think we just kind of know each other's personality. So we, we disagree with respect now. Yeah. And uh, so it's never a, a argument. We just, you know, there's different ways to skin a cat. And, yeah. and uh, we, we, we uh, respectfully, uh, you know, will agree uh, or disagree. Yeah. And, um, and for me, it's just, it's a huge blessing to have such a great football mind as well as great human being. And I know I'm talking my brother up and stuff. Yeah, you're being uh, really nice. He owes you dinner. <laughs> you know, he owes you he, dinner. He, he owes, yeah, he owes me for being a big brother. But, uh, <laughs> but um, you know, it's just, it's just, a, it's, it's huge for me, you know, and it's huge for uh, the school. The, the admin is really excited about having him on campus as a role model and, and as well as a coach, um, you know, and, and the coaches, they're, they're following suit. Nobody's, as far as I can see, nobody's having a hard time with him being here because he's a big personality as well. Uh, and so it's just, it's, it's huge, you know. Now, the, the first broadcast of the season on Teen Vision TV 16 is Rialto taking on Orange Vista. So check them out Friday night. Um, Teen Vision now on Vimeo, so you can watch that game live. And, and Coach, as you open up against Rialto, you know, uh, tell us what you like about this year's team at Orange Vista because we know about last year's team, and that was a breakout season. What, what do you like about this year's squad? This year's team is my four-year senior. So, you know, we opened the brand new school uh, three years ago, and uh, this, this is our first class of four year uh, kids who who actually came here out of eighth grade so that's really exciting really special and uh, what I look forward to is just kind of finishing it out with that group really strong and uh, and then you know trying to trying to win a title or two and uh, and doing it the right way um, this year as far as being different I think on offense we're going to throw the ball a lot more than we did last year so I mean, the cat will be out the bag pretty soon, but, but wait, we're going to throw the ball. We're going to throw. Say Zomo is going to throw the ball. <laughs> we're going to we're going to attempt. Awesome. We're going to attempt to throw yeah. the ball. So, uh, but no, we, we had a good uh, we had a good summer with our passing league, uh, 707, and uh, we're bringing along a young quarterback, a sophomore, and he's really good, really talented. He's just young and inexperienced, uh, and we got some young receivers that are inexperienced, but they're really talented. So. Um, you know, that's a good problem to have, you know, talented but inexperienced. Yeah. So uh, we're going to throw the ball. So you went to the finals in Division 13 last yeah. season. Now you're Division 12. But I, I was looking at the D12 schools. I mean, there's a lot of the same teams that you saw in 13, Division 13 from last season. Um, I feel like, though, you guys should be in the mix, right, if the young guys can progress like, like you're hoping they should be. Now, you know, I'm telling the kids that it's, it's all us. You know, we, I, I'm not sure – uh, who, you know, because we do have some different teams in that division. We actually moved up a division and they put two divisions behind us. So we're not yeah. um, at the bottom 13 is what it was last year. Um, and so um, I've been telling the kids we're capable of winning a division title and we're capable of probably going into the regionals and maybe even the state. So that's what our goals are. And I think we have the talent to do it. It's just a matter of how well we develop and how well we come together in jail. Do you look at the preseason rankings? I know they just came out this week. Are you guys checking at number four? Yeah, I, I think the CIF rankings are really important towards the end of the season. Yes. But early on, it's not as important. It's just kind of seeing where CIF puts put the team. You know, it's, but it's it's uh, it's not a big deal for us early. You know, we saw the two teams that beat us last year were ahead of us. Atalanta and, and El Monte were ahead of us in ranking, so we did notice that. So. El Monte, you're going to see them again, yes. right? And on, on the non-league schedule. Mm -hmm. Can you we talk about them. your non-league games and how? Uh, non-league is uh, uh, Rialto, of course, first. Colton, we replaced Yucca Valley with, um, with Burbank, which is a strong team mm -hmm. coming from Burbank. Uh, and then we go El Monte, and then Azusa is our pre-league. And then we're in our league, uh, the Inner Valley League, um, where we have uh, Riverside North, Poly, Lakeside, Paris, and Canyon Springs. And you got Same it memorized. Stuff. You got it. You got it nailed. Down, yeah, no, man. that's all I do, man. That's all I think <laughs> about. You know, so you know, I'm obsessed. I mean, for us, I always feel like high school football creeps up on us. Like, man, I can't believe it's week zero already. It's this this week, this Friday. Mm -hmm. Does it creep up on you, or do you, or like, are you in like? April and May looking at your watch thinking, come we're, on, man, can we go any faster here? Come on, let's go. We're practicing since March. So, yeah. you know, it's now it's a year round deal for for us. So no, it doesn't. It doesn't. It feels like we're we never have enough time, but I don't know about creeping up on us. But you know, so. so we're talking with Greg Zomalt uh, now at Orange Vista. Great run to the championship game last year. Um, Coach, this year's team in Division 12, I'm sure you got some returners. Yes. How valuable was that experience for them to go so deep in CIF last year and have them back knowing, knowing a little bit of what it's going to take maybe to, to finish it off this year? It's huge to have returners because they, they have that sting of, of losing and then they know what it feels like to be in a playoff game. They know what it feels like to play in a varsity game, in a senior night, in a homecoming game, in a, 
maybe a rivalry game, you know. And so uh, it's huge to have that experience coming back. But but also those guys have to teach the younger guys too. So next year it'll be their turn. So, uh, but we do have uh, a lot of guys coming back on defense, especially not as much on offense. Um, and so we should we should be all right. So you've definitely circled that El Monte game, then I'm sure that's one uh, you're looking at. Uh, I don't want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. I'll say it. We're looking forward to El Monte. Yes. yes. But first things for coach talk, Rialto yes. first. Right? Yes. Rialto Definitely. on Friday night Definitely. and then worry about them first. Mm-hmm. Coach, do you ever bring out your championship rings? Yes, I do. Once and in a I, while from, from the Citrus Hill days? Yeah, just to get the kids because we're always talking about rings. So it's yeah. good for them to get a visual. But uh, sometimes I think for the kids, uh, they – I don't know if they think it's easy to get the ring yeah. when you show them that, yeah. you know, it's there and stuff. So I don't know if I'll do that this year, but, um, you know, because it was bad luck last year. So, yeah. <laughs> so I don't change know. Change it I'll up. Do yeah, maybe change it up. And finally, Coach, before we let you go, because this is a busy time of the year for you, it's a busy night as well. Um, just do a little name dropping because we want to give the kids a shout out as okay. well. Who, who, I can't name them all, but who are some of the guys? That okay, look so on to defense, see? we have returners uh, Charles Taylor, we have. Uh, Juan Texas uh, Gonzalez. We have uh, Isaiah Jones, uh, Joseph Henson's a four-year starter for us, as well as Texas uh, and Isaiah, four-year starters for us. Uh, and then, um, and then up front, we have the two monsters and in, in Deion Wilson, who's committed to uh, Arizona as a DN, and then uh, Ethan Saunders, who's committed to Cal. Wow. Uh, and then we have um, some linebackers, well, a kid, uh, Chris Banks, who run a 10, 800 meters. So you know, he's going to bring speed to our our defense. Uh, and then on offense, we got the young quarterback, Elijah Robinson, um, as a sophomore. We got uh, Elijah Banks, who's, uh, who's a, a senior, four-year senior for us. And uh, I say four-year because, you know, we opened the school and we had three-year kids that yeah. were only there for three years. Uh, but he's a four-year senior, v- rev- very talented. His younger brothers, Chris Banks, they both run 10-8, 10, 10 900 meters, so really fast. Uh, Mikey Yen was a receiver uh, last year and, you know, and then the host of other guys that, you know, are really important to the team. So you got some guys. Yeah, we got some dudes. Yeah, we got dudes. They're just young. We just got to come together and yeah. go hard. And I just left from ripping them. So you know, <laughs> it's part of my life. You know? You know? Just getting them dialed in. Yeah, for just getting them, night, just right? getting them ready. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Well, coach, good luck again. Uh, the Teen Vision TV 16 game of the week this Friday night. It's Rialto at Orange Vista. Make sure you check it out live on Vimeo. Coach, we, we always appreciate the time. You're one of our favorites. Please tell Eric uh, we I said will. hello. And your mom, of course. Yes. Tell, yes. tell her we said hello. Yes, I will. Yeah, she, she's, the, right. she's the real, uh, I guess, boss of the operation. She right? definitely is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so. All right, All when right. we come back, uh, we'll talk CBU women's soccer on the Inland Sports Show. 96.7 KCAL Rocks. What's up? It's Patrick and Forty. Hey, man, you're watching the Inland Sports Show right here. Make sure you check out Pep Man. It's Inland Sports with Pep, but he's on every Monday and Thursday morning with Sports with Pep Man. You guys rock! The Inland Sports Show is brought to you by Spoiled. Quick, quality oil change. Spoil yourself and your car at Spoiled. Ken Sporting Goods. They have all of your sporting gear needs, letterman's jackets, and team uniforms. Boost performance training with Coach Ray Bass. Athletes of all levels and all sports are going to boost performance training in Corona. Mike's Fitness Equipment. Check out the new storeroom on La Cadena. Quality fitness equipment at affordable prices. Mike's Fitness Equipment. And JoJo's Gorilla Dog, located in the Mountain Grove Shopping Center in Redlands. Let's be frank, not all dogs are created equal. JoJo's Gorilla Dog. What's going on guys? Coach Bass here from Boost Training. Let me know if you haven't already, check out my new series of videos called Two Cents in 20 Seconds where I'll be talking about everything from strength training, motivation, and everything in between. You can find it on our social media platforms, uh, on Instagram at Boost Training, on Facebook, search for Boost Training, or on Twitter, Boost underscore Training. Check it out.
Hey, Billy here from Spoiled in Riverside. Uh, just opened up our new location off the 91 in Arlington in Riverside. Come check us out and get spoiled for a change. We develop quality citizens who keep our core, our country, and our communities side by side on the winning side. Not for glory, but for honor. For a code that isn't written or spoken, but lived. It's what we do. It's who we are. It's the battle cry of our fighting spirit. Battles won. See all the battles Marines fight to win at Marines.com. I believe that with anything you're doing, that you have to believe. Inland Sports Show. A couple uh, programming notes real quick. Boost Performance Training has a new location in Corona. So make sure you're following Inland Sports Show on Instagram and Twitter because we, we posted, we sent out the, the new address. So if you're looking for private lessons, if you're in your off season, maybe you're a baseball or soccer guy or whatever, lacrosse, track and field. Or, or just over 40 uh, men's basketball. Whatever. Yeah, they, I'm going to go train and boost. I'm going to go back and train. I'm at my playing weight. They will take them all. Uh, welcome back to the Inland Sports Show. We're about to go inside the Lancers, presented by Magnolia Heating and Cooling. Breaking news. What? We told you that CBU Women's Soccer has their season opener tomorrow night against Holy Cross. Holy Cross. Well, the field on campus is being refurbished. It's going to look better than ever. But it's not. apparently it's not ready yet because they moved the location to Silver Lakes in Norco. So that's a, that's a great facility out there. Oh, that's awesome. that big giant one off the freeway. Big, big old one. Huge. Our guy Mike Linskog's wife runs that place. She does? She does. Oh, hopefully she gave him a good deal. I'm sure she did. Um, and our guy Cullen Holt, who has been gone all summer, but he's back. He will be live on the air calling our Norda Vista versus Paloma Valley football game. But before that... He will be calling CBU women's soccer against Holy Cross. He does it all. I can't wait to see Colin. I can't wait to see you tomorrow night. I'm going to give you a big kiss on the forehead, and, and I can't wait to we see We missed him. I missed him. We our, haven't seen him in months. Our little son is coming back. Oh, so good to have him back. So a big doubleheader for Cullen tomorrow. CBU women's soccer against Holy Cross, then high school football that night. But right now, let's go inside the Lancers, presented by Magnolia Heating and Cooling, as we catch up with the CBU women's soccer team, talking about their expectations for this upcoming season and their opener against Holy Cross. We are a very young team. We graduated a lot of seniors. We've got a uh, we've got a very good group, but we're very young, and so I think it's important for us to play to have some good matches against uh, teams in region, out of region, uh, different styles of play, and so it'll be a great uh, preparation for us going into conference play. I think we've done really well of taking what the coaches have been giving us and just like translating that onto the field. Like our defensive shape is getting better, our 1v1 defending is getting better, and just overall like our chemistry on the field has gotten better from day one till now. Our first match against Holy Cross will be very just like a good eye opener to see how much like work we put out through this entire summer, through preseason, focus on like looking how we all work together as one unit and how we built up the culture and basically just overall how everyone learns like to play with each other and the chemistry. 
being a young team, though, the, the, the chemistry has clicked very quickly. And so I, you know, I think the captains have done a tremendous job. And uh, I think our attack, we're very, very excited about that. We've, we've got some uh, big time transfers that have, have transferred in and they've, they've uh, acclimated seamlessly. And so I think, um, you know, I think we'll be quite good and dangerous on the attack, but we're also going to be solid defensively. Honestly, it's an amazing feeling, not just like the title, just knowing that like I'm making an impact on all of these girls and being able to like build up a legacy and teach these girls of like what captain really means. It doesn't mean that you have to be the best player on the field. It just means that you're here to support these girls and help them like learn and support them, be there to like just mentor them. Yeah, I think it's very important to set the tone of our season, especially for us being a younger team. I know a lot of the girls are nervous, so if they see us like being able to hang with these top tier teams and just like winning these games, it'll just help them be motivated throughout the season, just like be more confident in their players. A new year, new challenges. We're very excited about it, but we, we know that we can compete uh, with the best teams and, and obviously we want to stay healthy so we can do that. But this, we're going to, there's going to be a learning curve being a young team, but we're, we're excited about the future and we're excited about what we can, uh, who we can compete against and what we can do this fall. And that was Inside the Lancers presented by Magnolia Heating and Cooling. The fall season is here, so we got women's soccer not only taking on Holy Cross Thursday night at Silver Lakes in Norco at 4.30, uh, but on Sunday they're going to play at UCR, the Crosstown Showdown, uh, the first one of this season, CBU against UCR. So that'll be a fun one. That's a big one. It's always fun to, when those uh, two programs, those two schools play each other, and uh, it's definitely bragging rights. Speaking of UC Riverside, our friend, head coach David Patrick, the assistant men's coach on the Australian Olympic team. Okay. They are playing the United States, I believe, tonight, and they are playing in front of, get this, 55,000 people are, are going to watch We're that in game. China? No, well, the, the, the world championships are in China. Yeah. The Olympics next year are in Hong Kong. But, uh, yeah. But the, the game tonight's in the, China. The, no, the game tonight is just a an exhibition. In Australia? In Australia. Oh. And they're expecting 55,000 people. Uh, the biggest... Uh, number of people to ever watch a, uh, a basketball game in Australia. U.S. against Australia. And David Patrick, who do you vote for? I don't I'm know. A, I'm an American, of course. I got, but I got my red, guy, white, blue. But my guy, David Patrick, I, <laughs> I, you know, I hope they do really well. I hope he coaches his butt off, but I want the stars well, and stripes. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. You know, I will say this. Uh, the Australian team is 0-26 versus the United States. But... Head coach Greg Popovich says that this Australian team could break that barrier and possibly win the world championship. I think I think Pop's probably – is he the coach of the U.S.? He is the head coach. He's playing mind tricks with the USA guys. He, he's doing I something. I think they're going to beat us guys and the USA guys. That's going to motivate them. I hope so because, the Aussies. you know, as much as I love David Patrick, he can't beat the U.S. <laughs> All right, we will see you again next Wednesday night, 6 o'clock, as by then we will have one week of high school football under yes. our belts. So we'll break down week zero, also look ahead to week one of the football season. Make sure you catch Jeff Friday night, Arlington against Hillcrest, Riverside TV, Rialto against Orange Vista right here on Teen Vision TV 16, and Sports Weekly Live on IEMG at 11 o'clock. That's why you got to follow the Boost broadcast schedule because there's a lot going on. All over the place. In fact, tomorrow yeah. night, Listen to us. I will be sideline guy. Sideline reporter. Sideline reporter. In fact, I'm going to stand next to Ken Batdorf the entire game. He said, you stand next to me. I don't care. So I'm just, I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to put a muzzle on so he won't curse. And it will be a fun, fun, fun game. Listen to it tomorrow night on the Inland Sports. Inland Sports Channel. We'll That's see it. you next Wednesday night live and amplified at Teen Vision TV 16 for another episode of the Inland Sports Show. Mm -hmm.